Ever since I've got movies, I've seen lots and lots of different ones, some where the performances make up for a bad script, or some that have bad cinematography but have a good script, and just all sorts of different films that come out that have various different pros and cons to them. Sometimes the pros outweigh the cons, sometimes it's vice versa. But Captain America Civil War is a very special comic book movie, and it's special specifically because it has one of the most retarded scripts I've ever ever seen in a comic book movie and the way it's shot the way it's directed the way it is performed the way it's just done uh, in ways outside of the script the way it's just done really makes you feel like the movie makes sense it really makes you feel like you're taking part in this experience while you're watching it but like a certain other marvel studios movie that came out three years ago iron man 3 once you put any thought into what the actual fuck is actually going on in this movie, everything breaks apart. And the film ends up suffering from a lot of the same problems that the comic book did, where a lot of the characters' motivations simply do not make any fucking sense whatsoever. They don't make sense in the context of this movie, and they sure as hell do not make sense in the context of the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, there are lots of, lots of characters who just did not need to be in this movie. There are lots of characters whose roles could have been bigger, but they aren't. Characters who really make no fucking sense to even be here. And it's just such a fucking mess. But the way the actors are delivering their lines, and the way the movie is shot, and the way the music is put into the film, it really does make you think that you're watching something that's actually kind of good. But this is not a good movie because the script is so fucking stupid because if you've read the comic book, you'll know that the biggest problem with the comic book is that in the comic, Tony is a dickhead scumbag and Captain America is completely insane. In this movie, it's the reverse. Captain America is a completely hypocritical, nonsensical, jackass dickhead while Tony Stark is completely a hypocritical lunatic. Like... It is the same thing from the comic books, except they reverse the roles. Um, and I really can't talk about this movie, just why it doesn't work without going into spoilers. So I'm just going to end the quote-unquote non-spoiler section with this. The film has great action set pieces. I think the score is fine. I think everybody gives it their A game, from the guys who have the bigger performances to the smaller ones. I think the way the movie is shot looks really, really good. And a lot of these kind of t more technical stuff really works but if you are going into this movie expecting civil war the logical one where characters are actually going to be actually mature about the discussion where the characters are going to make logical sense both personality wise and given what happened in the marvel cinematic universe you're not going to get that here because this every single fucking person in this movie is completely retarded everybody from captain america to bilbo baggins Everybody is a complete fucking retard moron who makes absolutely no fucking sense whatsoever. And just just think about the movie for five adjacent seconds and you're going to see what I mean. So yeah, it's just a mess, but a mess that does a fantastic job of making you think it's better than it actually is. So on to the spoilers section. So, uh, the whole movie is basically centered around the Sokovia Accords. And the Sokovia Accords are basically this bill that's being passed where the United Nations wants to bring in the Avengers under sort of government supervision so that something like Age of Ultron doesn't happen. Now, from this description, this already sounds very different from the comic book where the Registration Act was basically uh, you either work for the government or you work for S.H.I.E.L.D. or you're going to prison. There is no middle. You either work for us or you go to prison. Now, the comic book is kind of fucked up in the way that sometimes it's very sort of uh, you either go to work for S.H.I.E.L.D. or go to prison. And then there are other versions where they like trained people and, and, and like the Registration Act doesn't make any sense. But just in the confines of the comic book, it's about either work for S.H.I.E.L.D. or go to prison. The Sokovia Accords are not this. The Sokovia Accords are not this planet-wide bill that is being passed on to every superhero where they have to register their secret identity and work for the government or go to prison. That's not what the Sokovia Accords are. The Sokovia Accords only pertain to people who were or are members of the team known as the Avengers. And 
it's not even a situation where like, oh, if you don't sign the accords, you go to prison. It's like, no, if you don't want to sign the accords, you can like go to retirement. Like we're not going to, you know, send you to prison just because you don't want to sign our bill. Like just don't be a superhero. Just don't you know, involve yourself in this life anymore and we'll just let you live your life in peace. It's like it's no big deal, bro. But and so this sounds pretty sensible, uh, except it doesn't. Because everybody in this motherfucking movie acts as if the Sokovia Accords are the Registration Act from the comic books. There is a whole speech that Sharon Carter gives to about at Peggy's funeral where she's like, oh, Peggy did a lot of incredible things in her life, but because she was a woman, she was oppressed, and because she knew it was wrong, she held her ground, and she proved that she was right. Now, if the Sokovia Accords were a registration act that was oppressing superpowered people in general, that speech would make sense. That would make for a good parallel. But the Sokovia Accords are not presented as the fucking registration act this parallel is fucking retarded and the very fact that that steve even acknowledges this stupid speech as something that should you know motivate him to keep on fighting is just mind-numbingly stupid um, then there's another point in the movie where Vision talks about how, oh, well, since the rise of Iron Man and superheroes, more and more supervillains have come up, and when you have superheroes and supervillains, there's going to be conflict, and when there's conflict, there's going to be destruction. Once again, this parallel would make a considerable more amount of sense if the Sokovia Accords were like the Registration Act, where it was this thing that was targeting all superpowered people throughout the entire planet. But that's not what the Sokovia Accords are. It is literally just for the fucking Avengers. They are not rounding up... They're not, you know, sending special SWAT teams to hunt down Daredevil in Hell's Kitchen because he didn't want to sign a bill and reveal everyone's secret identity to them. That's not what it is in the fucking movie. So would you people please... Please, for the love of Jesus Christ, stop acting like this is the fucking Registration Act. And then it even gets stupider because... You know how Nick Fury was the guy who screwed around with the Tesseract and brought Loki to New York, which led to the destruction of New York, which led to the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D., which led to Age of Ultron? Nobody brings this point up. Everybody in this fucking movie acts like... The Avengers set up S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers brought the Chitauri here, the Avengers gave Hydra a means to get into the government and cause the Washington incident, and then it's all the fault of the Avengers. Nobody brings up Nick Fury's involvement in this. Nobody brings up Nick Fury at all. This movie blatantly cuts Nick Fury out of the fucking universe that this is supposed to be a part of, this multi-movie universe that's supposed to be intricately planned out if you follow the fanboy logic. And it is ignoring factual fucking evidence that should be brought up by the people who know that factual fucking evidence in the movie just for the sake of trying to make the Sokovia Accords seem like they make sense. But the Sokovia Accords don't make any fucking sense. There's not even like this whole situation where the government is, where the government knows that the Avengers didn't do it, but they need a scapegoat, so they're willing to throw the Avengers under the bus to save their own asses. That's not what they're doing. This isn't like in, and I really hate to even compare these two movies, but I really gotta say it. It's not like in Batman v Superman where the government is b blatantly lying to their own congressmen and senators about what happened in Africa so that it's because it's easier to pin the blame on Superman than it is to go after Lex Luthor. That's not what the movie... The movie never even hints at this. The movie never even implies that's what the Sokovia Accords are, basically the government trying to cover its own ass. It isn't. Like, everybody in this movie buys their own stupid bullshit. But okay, fair might be thinking, okay, the government is stupid, the government is always stupid in movies, surely it is the main players, Iron Man and Captain America, who make logical sense, right? No, they don't. They absolutely do not. Uh, Tony Stark's whole motivation in this is that a mother of a young man who was filled with potential, who was like really an up-and-comer in the world, who really could have made a big difference in the world, died in the Battle of Sokovia, and she confronts Tony Stark about it. And Tony Stark really lays it on thick. Like, he tells the other members of the Avengers, 
about this kid. He talks about how we have to be held accountable, and it looks like he's actually taking kind of responsibility for his actions. And then comes Spider-Man. So, remember what I just said. Tony Stark is motivated by the death of a young man full of potential who could change the entire world thanks to his genius dying in Sokovia by being caught up in a war zone that was engineered by Tony Stark. Then Tony Stark goes to Peter Parker, a young man full of potential who could conceivably change the world with both his powers and his naturally given smarts by dragging him into a fucking war zone amongst the most dangerous men and women on the planet. What the actual fuck were they thinking with this motivation? Because Spider-Man was not supposed to be in this movie. Like, Spider-Man was shoehorned into this movie. And the fact that that Spider-Man's inclusion breaks Tony Stark's entire fucking motivation just throws it off a fucking skyscraper and just watches it with a shit-eating green on its face as it splats onto the ground is proof positive that Spider-Man should not have been in this movie. It just doesn't make any sense. And and for all you guys who are like, but Spider-Man is back at Marvel! Fuck off. Fuck off. I don't care about Spider-Man. The only version of Peter Parker I've ever liked is the one written by JMS. Every other version of Peter Parker can piss off. Now, Tom Holland is good in the role. He is good. But his inclusion so blatantly breaks Tony Stark's motivation. It just baffles me that they couldn't find any kind of other conceivable reason to to put him in here. Like, it's just such amateurish writing that I'm baffled that no one who's watched this movie has brought it up. And then it just gets progressively, you know, worse and worse where... Tony just descends further into insanity, and he just becomes a raving lunatic by the end. Um, And then we have Steve Rogers, who's a hypocritical asshole. So, Steve's whole point is that the event, the governing governing bodies cannot be trusted to control superpower people because of what happened with Hydra. Okay, that's already kind of a pretty. That's you're already kind of generalizing every governing body that's being corrupt is Hydra. That they that they just can't be trusted, like the United Nations. So, but but whatever, I can kind of see what Steve is going at. But then Steve makes this whole point about freedom and how the Avengers should self-regulate themselves. The Avengers are the guys who know what's best for the world, and it's the Avengers who are the safest hands to wield this power. Now. In a movie that is actually mature and logical, where characters aren't being conveniently written as fucking idiots to get the thing rolling, um, you would have somebody say that uh, Tony Stark doing his own thing, Tony Stark uh, doing whatever the hell he wanted to, feeling that he knows what's better for the world than everybody else does, is what leads to Ultron. He created Ultron because he thought that Ultron would be the be-all, end-all solution to every problem, or at least every security problem on the planet. And that's what happened in Age of Ultron. He thought he was the smartest guy on the planet. He thought, and he had the freedom to enforce his idea, and he did it, and an entire fucking city got blown up. Nobody brings this point up in the movie. Nobody. Nobody tells Steve that he's being kind of retarded by talking about this freedom and liberty bullshit when freedom and liberty for the Avengers has factually proven to be quite, quite dangerous. Nobody brings this up. And it, and once again, I really don't like the fact that I have to bring this movie up, but this isn't like Batman v Superman where Batman is clearly insane, where Batman, where you can understand Batman's motivation, but Batman is going about his whole mission to stop Superman in the most insane, obsessive, rage-fueled, and just borderline insane way possible. No, this movie is trying really, really hard to make you believe that the characters here are being mature adults whose whole motivations, ideology, and all that shit makes perfect sense. Like, this is not one guy is clearly unhinged and the other guy is clearly good. No, this is everybody is right, everybody has good points, except nobody does. Everybody has the beginnings of a good point, but when you actually think about what's happened and what when, what events these guys are using to back their points up, the entire fucking movie just dies. It just doesn't make any sense. 
And Steve is a really big asshole. And this movie really makes Steve out to be a total scumbag because he also talks about how he doesn't want to be ruled by governing bodies because governing bodies have agendas. And an agenda is usually using other people to do what you want them to do without giving them full information because giving them the full information might make things inconvenient for you. That's what Steve does throughout the entire fucking movie. And nobody brings this point up. Nobody brings up the point that Steve is purposefully being a lying scum sucking hypocrite whose whose entire uh validity just went out the window along with tony's because he is pushing this whole agenda of saving bucky barnes and then there are two characters who just have no reason to be in this movie hawkeye and ant-man hawkeye has no reason to be in this movie he has literally no motivation he just he just shows up and he's like hey um i got kind of sick of retirement so for all you guys who liked my arc in win in age of ultron where i learned to value my family above the job fuck you up the ass with the loaded shotgun that's basically hawkeye in this movie uh, which is a really big shame because I really liked Hawkeye and Age of Ultron, and this movie completely screws over everything good Age of Ultron did with Hawkeye. Um, Ant-Man. Ant-Man's whole thing in his solo movie was proving to his ex-wife, his, uh, his ex-wife's a new husband or boyfriend or whatever, and his little girl, that he's a hero. And it is established that Scott Lang is a guy who's like anti-establishment when he feels like the establishment is doing something wrong. And... If this was the fucking Registration Act, where the government was forcing Scott Lang to work under them or go to prison, I would understand why he would join up with Captain America. But as I previously established, the Sokovia Accords do not work like the fucking Registration Act. He has no reason to be in this movie except to pander to the fanboys because, like, Ermagerd, John Man is here, Ermagerd. Oh, my fucking God, indeed. <laughs> it's just... It, it, he, it makes no sense for him to be here. He has no stakes. Like, if this was the Registration Act, he would have a good reason to rebel against the government. But here, he's just like, well, I beat the shit out of Falcon, and I owe him a favor, so I'm going to completely take a big, massive dump on everything good I did to build up trust between myself, my little girl, and uh, my, my wife's uh, new boyfriend. And I'm just going to take a big old shit, a shit on that because the Russo brothers need me to be fucking giant man in this movie. You know who would have made sense instead of Spider-Man, instead of Hawkeye, instead of Ant-Man? Hulk! Why isn't Hulk in this movie? Hulk would make so much more sense to be in this movie than he does in a movie that is titled Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok being the apocalypse of the Norse gods. And you would also have this cool situation where Captain America has Black Widow on the opposing side, this big friend of his. And then on the other side, you would have Bruce Banner on a Captain America's team serving the same function for Tony Stark. And now that would actually mean that their whole things, that this whole thing about having friends on opposite sides would matter. But Black Widow and Captain America have nothing of a discussion about, there. there is nothing there between those two characters. Like there's just... No, there's no significant moment where Cap is like, oh man, Natasha's like working against me. Like, nothing comes of that. Nothing of value comes of that. Like, Black Widow's just there. She has a couple of dialogue scenes with Tony, Cap, and T'Challa. Then she has an action scene, and then she fucks off out of the movie forever. Well, well, she fucks off until Avengers Infinity War. But if the movie just cut out all those superfluous characters like Spider-Man, like Hawkeye, like Ant-Man, and just replaced them all with Hulk, you would already have an infinitely better, more sensible movie. And it even makes sense for Hulk to be here, because Thunderbolt Ross is in this movie. You could do some cool shit with Thunderbolt Ross and Hulk. It would make a lot more sense to bring in Hulk, who would actually have both thematic and logical sense to be in this movie, than the three other guys on Captain America's team that make no fucking sense to be here. Um, and then there's Chadwick Boseman's T'Challa. Um, his, his whole thing is good in concept, but the execution is so just wrong. Like, it just doesn't work. Like... His father dies in his introduction. Like, we get five seconds of him talking with his dad, and then his dad dies, and then he's like, okay, I'm going to kill Bucky Barnes because he killed my dad. And the movie tries to play up this whole fact that T'Challa is becoming evil and corrupted because of his need for vengeance against Bucky Barnes. And it's a good story arc in theory, but the resolution to it is so forced, so nothing, that it just 
doesn't really work because the guy doesn't get enough screen time to himself to warrant that. We don't really get enough scenes with him just being alone, just contemplating what had happened. We don't get enough scenes for us to care about his father, to really, you know, care about, you know, why he was such a great man. And overall, it's just one of those things where his inclusion kind of makes sense, but if it had more screen time devoted to it, if it had... Uh, some tweaks done to it, it would work considerably better. And as it stands, you've got a good actor giving a good performance and a character who looks kind of cool, but his storyline and kind of origin story, whatever, just is criminally underdeveloped. And and then the movie has this weird thing with romances, where the, where I find the romance is really, really creepy. Um, you have the romance between Wanda and Vision, and... Uh, I, I'm not a fan of this pairing in the comic books and in, in the comic books or any of the adaptations because I just think it's really fucking weird that a woman is screwing a robot. I just don't find that weird. And it gets even creepier here because everybody acts like Wanda is like 16 years old in this movie. Like she's like borderline teenager, barely legal. And when you have that kind of context, the fact that she's making googly eyes at a 40-something-year-old Paul Bettany with this freaky fucking makeup on, it just gets really, really creepy. It just doesn't work. Um, and the saddest thing is their exchanges are some of the only exchanges that aren't dealing with the stupid, retardedly written main plot about the Sokovia Accords. Um, and then we have Sharon and Steve, which these two have maybe one uh, significant conversation throughout the entire movie and and, th and even in Winter Soldier these two have no meaningful conversations whatsoever so these two have one conversation in this movie and then they're in love and I already find it kind of creepy because Steve Rogers was this close this close you guys can't see it but it's he was so very close to becoming this chick's grandfather and now she's making out with him and it's especially creepy because Peggy just died maybe a couple of days ago when they finally kiss. It's really creepy. It just doesn't work for me. I just don't like that pairing. It just it doesn't it it's fucking creepy, okay? I just I just did not feel comfortable watching that kind of stuff. Um and then there's the time lapses. Uh this is kind of a nitpick. But if you thought All-Star Batman and Robin was really terrible with how time transitions where apparently it takes Batman like five days worth of time to get to the Batcave and then five hours after Dick Grayson is, you know, uh, kidnapped by Batman, uh, there are already going to be like pictures of Dick Grayson on milk cartons. Like if you thought that was retarded in ass bar, you're going to you're going to love this movie because this movie does the very exact same thing because every single there is no like clear moment of transition from scene to scene. So so uh, they talk about the Sokovia Accords, and then the next scene, the Sokovia Accords are happening. And then the next scene, it's Bucky. And then the next scene is Cap looking for Bucky. And it looks like all this shit is happening literally, like, maybe a couple of hours, one after the other, with nary a mention of any transition. And it also doesn't help that everything looks the fucking same in this movie. And this is a problem I'm having more and more with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where all their movies on Earth look the fucking same. They're all so fucking gray, so bland, so borderline TV, so fucking interchangeable with one another that I just cannot stomach to look at them. Like, you cannot give me some of the shit that the other studios are doing that looks visually spectacular, that, like, rivals Kingdom Come on the big screen, and then give me this pedestrian generic shit. And it's also really a big problem because these guys are shooting this movie as if it's a sol if it's a sequel to Winter Soldier, and because of that, whenever they do some crazier comic book, you know, action stuff, it just looks bad. Like, Spider-Man sticks out like a sore thumb in this movie. Um, his suit looks just terrible. Um, and, and I don't even... Like, he were, he looks worse than Sam Raimi's Spider-Man does in the CGI segments in back as early as 2001. Like, that's how bad he looks. And then the moment where he's, like, half unmasked on the ground, and the suit still looks like it's so fucking CGI. It just doesn't look right. Ant-Man looks okay, I guess, but but the Russos are not a good fit for this style. Like, the Russos are definitely guys who should be making smaller-scale movies where they're not so super reliant on CGI as so much as they're reliant on more actual people doing the stunts. And I think that they're just not a good fit for Infinity War. Just based on this movie, they're just not going to be a good fit for it. 
Um, I actually really wish that Joss Whedon did this movie because I think that Whedon would have been able to make this thing work considerably better, and I think he would have done considerably more care to the script to make sure it makes sense. Um, because as it stands, like this is a movie that has lots of good humor, all the performances are great, and it has quite a few good action set pieces, but the foundation of the entire movie is so broken, and the whole movie is like a really, really somber episode of South Park, you know, because South Park's whole thing is that the adults are retarded, and they're not aware that they're retarded. And this movie is like that. Like, everybody in this movie is a fucking idiot or a hypocrite or just an outright fool. And they're, they're, de they're delivering their lines with such earnestness, with such sincerity, that while you're watching the film, you might actually think to yourself, wow, this is actually really damn good. But after talking about this with a few other people and actually thinking about the movie and what it's doing, it really doesn't earn anything. Like, this is just as bad as the comic book in a lot of ways it suffers from a lot of the same problems as the comic where there were clear editorial mandates that screwed over the creative team uh the motivations for the fighting make absolutely no sense and the characters just just sink into into a random bullshit that doesn't make sense by the end and the big whole uh dramatic conclusion to the whole storyline just doesn't work like the movie does not earn the ending it's trying to earn and it just comes off as awkward and painful to watch. It just it's kinda like it's it's kinda like Troll too, where <laughs> where the movie is trying to be dramatic and actually good, but it's so bad and it just doesn't know that it's bad. And and it, and it's like that. It's just it's it's a fascinating movie. It is easily the worst Marvel Studios script that's ever been adapted to the big screen, but the directors are are under such an illusion they're creating some kind of masterpiece that they actually make you believe that it isn't completely retarded trash. Uh, so yeah, this is a fun movie if you completely turn your brain off. Because if you put any thought into anything that happens in this movie, it will completely just fall apart at the seams. Like, it makes no fucking sense. And I would not be so hard on this movie if the movie didn't try to sell itself as like an equal, mature argument against two sides. Because if this movie actually did something like BVS did where where one side is clearly the bad guy with an understandable motivation, the other side is clearly the good guy, you would have a lot more plausible movie. But here, this movie is trying to make everyone's opinion matter. It's trying to make everyone's opinion sound logical and mature and well thought out. And the holes are so easy to poke in their whole logic that everyone just looks like an even bigger dipshit than they do in most other uh, movies that I've seen. Like, the best way I can describe this film in one last sentence is that this is if Christopher Nolan directed The Dark Knight in the same way that he directs it as we know it, and he directs the actors, and the actors perform everything in the same way, but the whole movie is script on a Transformers uh, level script of retardism. That is Captain America Civil War. It could have been a fantastic Captain America sequel, but editorial mandates completely screwed it over, and don't even lie to me about that, because Robert Downey Jr. was going to be a very small role in this movie until Kevin Feige upped it up so that it can become a pure Civil War movie, and then Spider-Man got shoehorned in, and this movie is a mess. It is the it is the closest thing I've seen to an editorially mandated mess of a comic book being literally translated onto the big screen through both its production and the way it's executed. It's just, it's a mess. It doesn't work. I understand why a lot of people like it, because I think the movie is kind of a good time while you're watching it, but if you turn your brain on, the movie dies like it has it holds no water whatsoever and i'm honestly shocked and baffled that this is getting 95 percent scores on rotten tomato like this movie is an insult to the to the genuinely great material that marvel has done in age of ultron in daredevil season one in jessica jones in winter soldier in first avenger in, in iron man like it is an insult to those legitimately great projects that this same studio has done. And in comparison to the other great projects that have been done by the other comic book movie making studios, it's just a fucking travesty that this thing has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. It just does not earn that whatsoever.